Hi class, this is Professor Albano, and this is an introduction to the CIS 130 course, Computer Hardware. Before I begin this introduction, I want you to think about why you are here at WCC. The better you can answer this question, the better you'll succeed at WCC and beyond. Most of you are here to get a computer job, but why? To get a computer job and to make money and to have a good living. Okay. So we're going to take a look at how you accomplish that. How are you going to get that computer job? It is more than just coming to WCC, taking classes and graduating. You're going to have to add something to your resume because companies receive hundreds of resumes and they want to uh, accept the ones that they know are certified by worldwide uh, company called CompTIA. Now, these are the certifications that are recognized for IT jobs or information technology jobs. And uh, these are the CompTIA certifications that lead you towards a cybersecurity job and lead you towards an entry-level computer job. Now, this, uh, the CompTIA A+, is the key to getting your first computer support job. You put that on your resume and you're graduating from here. And with experience, you have a great shot at getting that first computer job. But in order to get a cybersecurity job, you need a different certification. And this is the Security Plus certification. And this is the key to getting your first cybersecurity job. Now, what are the cybersecurity jobs that this leads to? Now, the first kind of cybersecurity job is what I call a red team job. And you'll learn the techniques for doing this when you take the pen testing course. Now, a job of a red team is to go into a company's computer systems and determine what are the weaknesses and the flaws in the system so that they would be able to better protect their computer systems from the bad guys. But the bad guys are always gonna get into computer systems and you need a different team to be able to take care of that. And that's the, the blue team job, okay? And the Security Plus certification leads you towards either one of these two paths, okay? If you take the, C, uh, the 270 course with me, uh, I guide you towards the CYSA, which is a blue team job. Now, the blue team, the job of the blue team is, first of all, to detect that the bad guy is in the system. It's, sometimes it's very difficult to find that out. And sometimes the bad guy is in your the computer system for months doing all sorts of damage to your systems and extracting data that you spend a lot of money for or even your customers. Okay? So the job of the blue team is, first of all, to detect the bad guys in the system, then to isolate that part of the system, and then to rebuild that part of the system. So these are the kind of uh, IT jobs that you'll be shooting for. Initially, it's just the entry level job. So I'll describe what each of these jobs are in the following slides. An entry level computer support job in a large company uh, is where you typically start out before you even get into cybersecurity. And they wanna see that how well you handle uh, problems and solve computer problems, okay? What you are trying to do is solve problems, become a, a, a great problem solver. It'll be great for your career in cybersecurity. So as a help desk, uh, people uh, maybe within the company or customers call up with problems with either hardware or software, and you guide them through the solutions to that problem, okay? And uh, you may actually be doing computer support where you actually go out onto a site and to actually do computer repair. So these are the two kinds of entry-level computer support jobs. 
Now, at entry level cybersecurity jobs is typically in the blue team. Now, the blue this this operation is a security operations center, and in the security operations center, they're looking at what's going on in the world. Okay, and you might be sitting at this desk and doing what's entry level is tier one support. This is tier one people, tier two people, tier three people. And basically what your job is to, you're, you're each responsible for different parts of the system. So you may be looking at a file server and a database server. Uh, another entry level person might be looking at web server and another server. And what you're doing is looking for indicators of compromise where you think that the bad guy may be. When you look at an indicator of compromise, you'll dive into it to see if it's truly an attack. And if, it's, if it is an attack, you'll try to isolate that part of the system so the bad guy doesn't spread throughout the whole operation, okay? So this is an entry-level cybersecurity job in a security operations center, which is part of the blue team operation. Now we use LabSim for this course, and what we'll be using is LabSim PC Pro, and how to order it is in the course outline. And you can buy it online for about $130, or you go to the bookstore, uh, and the bookstore it's $180. Now, uh, if you uh, are on financial aid, you could do it either way. And if you do it online, then you'd have to submit your bill to the financial aid office. Okay. Okay, so what does LabSim consist of? It consists of videos which show you how to, which teach you concepts and, do, and does demonstrations. And then it has labs. That's the beauty of it, okay? Gives hands on with hardware, software, and networks. And I'll show that a little bit later on. And then you'll do quizzes to see what you've learned. And then the book is fact sheets, which summarize what was taught. So LabSim is an interesting product, and I'll explain some of the details of it now. So first of all, LabSim is a simulator. It simulates different things, okay? Now, one of the things it simulates is the real world. If office buildings, there'll be several office buildings, and there'll be, there'll be computers in the office building, and there'll be a back office. I call this the front office. I call this the back office which contains the routers and the switches and the way to get out to the internet. So basically, what we'll first do is we'll imagine that you've got a problem on marketing one computer. So if you click on marketing one computer, you'll get access to it like this. You'll get access to the marketing one hardware and, uh, and the software that's associated with it. So maybe you'll be installing another motherboard or, or maybe you'll be changing connections to the case. You'll be solving problems. And when you do it correctly, you'll see that the hardware and the software work together and you'll see the results and you'll get a, uh, a check mark. You'll see the... <coughs> now, if you don't get it correct, you can do it over again. And I'll explain that uh, a little bit later on. So it's also... If you click on network closet to do work in the network closet, you'll see what's back there. And back there is what is a standard 19 inch relay rack, which consists of routers and switches and servers. And you'll be able to uh, make changes uh, in, on the back office and uh, see the results. So it simulates the office, it simulates the hardware, it simulates the back office, which is really cool. Now, as a simulator, it doesn't simulate 100% of everything. Only what's needed, what you need to do in order to solve a problem. And that's the difference between a simulator and a virtual machine, okay? So I'm gonna take a look at how we use each of these things. We'll look at the video. So this is a quick little video, which explains how to use the video, how to operate and use the video. So this is going to be a little demonstration on how to use the uh, video part of LabSim. With hard disk drives, this is what the inside of one looks like. The hard disk drive is composed of many different platters, aluminum disk coated with magnetic material that's magnetized and demagnetized to speed up or slow down the video. Uh, um, 
easily like you do with YouTube. Okay, so here's how you would speed it up. Encode binary data. Over here, we have our read write heads. These heads read and write information to and from the plotter surface. Data is stored on both sides of the plotter. Or you can slow it down if you don't understand, want to be able to see more of the details or what's going on. You could slow it down. There. So there's a head on the bottom and top of each disc. The heads are connected to this armature, which has an electric motor that moves the heads in and out so they can access every part of the you could also put in an interactive script in case people have uh, hearing difficulties or sometimes it's just a lot, a lot easier uh, when you're doing a demonstration to see the text and see the video at the same time. Yes. These platters spin at a very high speed as they spin a little cushion of air is created on the surface of the disc, which keeps the heads from writing right on top of the platter. You can also skip uh, the different sections. In other words, this is all on storage and this is only hard disk drive. So if you wanted to understood that whole concept and you want to just skip ahead and see the other one, just click here. Now let's move now on, let's to, move on to solid state drives, drives. And competitor, competitor with hard disk drives. drives. Solid, solid state drives are another type of long-term storage. So this is going to be a little so that was a little demonstration on how to use a video. So let's see how to use the exams in LabSim. Now, one of the things you can do at the end of each module, you typically will get an exam. And uh, as you, you, and typically they're multiple choice and uh, you'll select which, is, which one of these things and you'll get, if you got it wrong, first of all, you could click on it to see the answer uh, right away. So you don't have to wait until you, do all 10. So as you go through a question <clears throat> and click on it, in this particular example, we got it wrong, okay? And, and it shows you what is the correct answer and then explains why it was correct. So when you take the quiz at the end of each module, I only take a grade, the highest grade. So you could take the exam over and get a higher grade. And the whole objective here is to get 80% or more, and then you'll get a check mark for completing this item. When you do the labs, it's very similar, okay? What you've got to do is read the task, usually on the left-hand, it will be always on the left-hand side, read it carefully, do all the steps. Now, sometimes I go through it and I read it, I read it, don't read it carefully, I'll miss a step and I'll, I'll get it wrong, okay? But when you complete the lab, you'll see the results right away, what you've done right and what you've done wrong. And then it gives you an explanation of how to do it correctly. And you could do it over again to get a to get your check mark. And the goal is to get 80% or more to get the check mark. Okay. So when you go through a particular module, you'll be going through module one initially. When you go through all of them, you'll get check marks when you complete them. Normally, the uh, a lot of times you don't get a check mark for a fact. So don't worry about not getting a check mark here. So let's see what all of these little icons mean and what they do. Okay. So the first thing is a little triangle, which is a video lesson. And they usually do this in the beginning, which is to explain the, the concepts of what's going on, okay? And then at the end of the concepts that they do, they typically have uh, the fact sheets, which is, you could just read, and it's a summary of what they've done before. And then they'll show you how to do something. In the first case, they'll show you how to use a, the simulator. And then after they show you how to do it, you've got to do it, okay? So when you see the little mouse, that means it's a lab exercise. And then typically at the tail end of it, they have the practice questions. And the key part of it is I only grade the lab exercises in the exams and do it over until you can get a, the check mark, which is 80%. And that's the part that I grade. Okay. Now, this is a good tip. If you're working with a a uh, laptop that's smaller than 15 inches, it makes it very difficult to do lab sim. So you're gonna make life a lot easier if you get an external display, at least 20 inches and connect it up uh, and you can do all your work uh, on the big display. 
it makes life a lot easier okay it'll cost you about 130 bucks to get the the laptop and the cable and uh, to see how to install it you can click here you can see the details of how to do something and if you need any help just send me an email and i work your way through it to help you do this now these are the assignments are due each week they spend, you got to spend at least four hours, four to five hours each week, okay? And uh, late work is not accepted. It'll be counted as zero. And don't leave things to the last minute. So do it, in, typically do it in chunks. What I would do is like download the assignment in the beginning of the week and then do one or two of the parts and complete it uh, before Sunday because they're always due by Sunday, 1159, okay? So what, what we're doing is we're not working through everything in PC Pro. PC Pro has a lot of information and I've extracted the operating system information because you're going to do that in the 135 course. So this is what you're going to be doing. The first week is just an introduction and also part of the PC technician part. So it's lab sim assignments one and 2A. And then you're going to complete PC technician, which is part B. And then we'll be going over components and I broke it down so that you'll be only spending four to five hours on each part of it. So you'll do three A, B and C for components. And then we'll go into storage and I broke that down into two parts. And then finally we have a break, okay, spring break. Then we'll go into file management, peripheral devices, devices outside the, the, the system case. And then uh, networking, and I broke that down into three parts. Mobile devices, broke it down into two parts, and printing. So this is the hardware portion of the LabSim PC Pro, okay? The software portion of it, you're going to be going over an operating system. And at the end of the course, I'll give you one week to take a final exam. And this one is different. You only get one attempt at the simulations and the questions. So that's what's ahead of us for the five weeks, okay? So let me show you what a typical assignment would be. So after you do uh, uh, an assignment, I'll pick something typical like over here. If you do an assignment, I'm asking you to complete the, the parts that are here. Three, uh, three, one, cases and form factors, power supply, motherboards, and motherboard troubleshooting. And then I want you to identify something that interests you in each one of these. Now, something has got to interest you. If you don't get interested in any of these things, maybe this field is not for you. Maybe computers is not for you. Got to be interested in it. Your things are changing all the time, and you got to be interested so you could learn. In this field, you got to constantly learn. So you go through each of these, you pick out something that was interesting to you, and then I say, pick one of these topics in this case, motherboard, and explain in technical technical terms, minimum of 200 words altogether, and explain why it was interesting to you, and then explain how you might use it as a computer technician. So this is a typical assignment. So each week you'll be doing you'll be doing uh, doing lab sim. Each week you'll be doing these different modules. That's a whole module. They call them chapters or module. Find something that's interesting to you. Identify what was interesting. Say why it was interesting and how you could use this information as a computer technician. Okay. So this is the way I grade them. So your weekly assignments is based on the labs and quizzes, 70% of it, and then you report 30%. And if you miss the deadline, the grade is zero. I do uh, uh, drop one of the lowest grades. So... If you could do mess up and mess up with one of them, it won't affect your final grade. Okay. Now, these are the courses that will prepare you for that key A-plus certification. So the, this course is 130. The 135 is the operating system. So you'll be doing the operating system part of the, of the, PC, of the uh, PC Pro. And then 140 is networking. So A-plus includes all of this stuff. So. You need a plan to actually get your A-plus certification. When you think you're ready, completing your 130, 140, 135, you first of all form a study group, about four people, to, and spend weeks to prepare for the A-plus certification. And uh, in May and June, you typically do this stuff over the break, okay? So study and prepare for the exams. 
there's practice exams in lab sim, Udemy, and actually in CompTIA. You can go to CompTIA site and they got practice exams. So you do the practice exams until you get 85% or better because you got to pay for the certification exams, okay? So there's two parts of it. This is the first part, A plus 1001, okay? And weekly, you'll get together, meet a couple times a week, and you can go over ideas and techniques and uh, uh, so help each other as part of that group. And then in July, you have to buy the half-price voucher. It's about $100. Schedule it and take the exam. And then when you finish that, you want to study for the A, A, A plus 102 exam, okay? And do the practice. And again, in labs and Udemy and also CompTIA until you practice to get over 85. And then September, buy your half price and schedule exam to take it before you get deep into the next semester. So this is a plan. Getting that A plus certification is gonna get your first computer job, entry-level computer job, okay? Uh, how to get help in this course, okay? So basically you need help in Brightspace, you call this number. When you need help in LabSim, uh, you got to realize LabSim uh, is located in Utah and they're behind, they're two hours behind. So um, th this is from eight o'clock to eight o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock at night, you can get help this way, okay? But it's only during the week, not on weekends. So that's why it's good to actually do some of the work or all of the work before even the weekend. And if you have help with anything else, email me in Brightspace or see me during my office hours. Okay. That's the end of this introduction to 130. I hope you enjoy the course as much as I did developing it for you.